Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here popping in for another episode of Talks with Tony. Now, I have about an hour, so we'll see where this takes us. Now, this one looks like it's single space. Uh, this thing look long. This look long. Now, the title on here, I'm not sure what the title is on the video on YouTube, but the title on here um, got a couple of little explicit word in it so I can't say that so let me see now what we got now hey Tony I don't really have a question rather a cautionary tale for younger women okay well all right so this video might not be a question then this is a cautionary tale for my other YouTube life coach that says she wanna you know send a message out there my ex-husband wants to reconcile and i have now blocked him from calling my cell phone should i send back the rings here's my story i squandered years from age 38 to 48 with a man who i now know after listening to you he did not ever want to marry me but we got married after being together 10 years I have moved to another city, then he came and proposed. I had moved to another city, then he came and proposed. I accepted. We married six months later in October 2017, but he needed to relocate to the new city. I would not have accepted if he had not said he would move. He said he'd move within six months, but as we got closer to that time, he still had not discussed with me the reload plan. Okay. So it says you're going to call it a reload plan. Just cut off from the relocation. I asked, I asked about the relocation plan and he told me, don't worry about it. I don't talk. I take action. Okay. After two more months, I bring it up again. But he puts it off and says, we'll talk when he's in town. So when he's visiting me, I go through his phone and find an album labeled BBC with 600 plus pictures of naked and scantily clad white women. Commercial break. Y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> no, what? Nah. Nah, what do BBC... <laughs> wow. Now, what do BBC mean? Y'all forgive me. I had something in my throat. It might just mean something to him. Nah, that's a, that's a, okay, the Urban Dictionary got one thing, but I don't think that's what, hmm, what do BBC mean? He, I, maybe that's just something for him. Nah, the Urban Dictionary say it mean bees, the B word, the cuss word, bees be crazy. And then of course we know it is. I wonder if to see me um Caucasian. Y'all forgiving that caught my guard. Y'all forgiving. Y'all forgiving I. I go through his phone and find an album labeled BBC with 600 plus pictures of naked and scantily clad white women. 
Then another album with over 500 pictures of naked, scantily clad, brown skin honeys and more naked white women. We are African American. Anyway, I tell him it is disrespectful to have those pictures and he needs to delete them. And he got upset. He got upset. Y'all forgive me now. I went and put a word together. Got upset. Y'all forgive me now. That is not my accent. And he got upset and said I was busting his... <laughs> he got upset and said I was busting his balls about some images that don't mean anything <laughs> and that don't mean anything and all those pictures were sent to him from guys he didn't go out looking for them and I tell him and I tell him along with his failure to not discuss relocation and this I was not feeling happy in this marriage and he said you have nothing to worry about and dismiss my concerns so after a year of marriage of which he lives eight hours away we saw each other twice a month at first then once a month with us alternating me being there or him here i started thinking of divorce trying to figure out the quickest way because my state requires a one-year waiting period or something so in April 2019, I tell him we should divorce. He still lives in Ohio and it's been a year and a half and no discussion of the reload plan. And we have not seen each other in person for four months. He says it's not that bad and things have been distant and we should try harder. So at this point, we attempt to revive the relationship. Bloody um, parentheses now. As I did not speak to him at all during the month of March and go to Florida for a brief vacation in May 2019, which by the way, I paid for the hotel and rental car. He was to give me half when he got there, but you already know I didn't get it. So we're in Naples and I'm now suspicious he has a girlfriend or other women he's having at, in Ohio, and that is why he does not want to leave. So I go through his phone while he's showering. I don't see anything. He sanitized his phone. But that same BBC album that he claimed he deleted, only he just renamed it. He also wanted to talk finances on this trip and the relocation plan. She said reload plan, but I that, that reload plan just uh, just don't sit uh, yeah, don't fit my swagger. Reload. I came ready with my list of credit card debts, other bills, but of course we were there four days and he kept putting it off. I think when he saw that I had my list of. <laughs> Commercial break. That a list of debt. <laughs> now come on now, y'all. <laughs> now y'all gotta forgive me now. This one right here now. This now this letter here. Now she's serious now. She's serious. So y'all forgive me. Y'all please forgive me on this right here. Cause she's serious. She is serious, but it just sometimes you be reading these letters and they be so depressing. Now the good thing is this is about some pictures. Okay, this is about some picture. Yes, it's not a good thing. Yeah, he absolutely crazy. Eleven hundred pictures. I ain't even got eleven hundred pictures of anything, let alone of just naked women alone. Like, wow, he need to be in somebody center, hospital, something. Now let me get back to where I was. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gotta forgive him about that list of debts now. Nah. Sister was ready. She came down there, had that whole list. <laughs> Went fanning that paper. <laughs> okay. 
Chase Freedom. Okay. Chase Freedom Unlimited. Okay. Merrick Bank. Okay. U.S. Bank. Okay. Fidelity. Okay. I I mean, now that right there, that hit me there, sister. Because the thing about it is, now, y'all ain't been talking. Y'all ain't seen each other. And you finna hit the mail with that list of debt. I think when he saw that I had my list of debts, he lost interest, but says that he is not after my money. When I get back home to my state, I see my attorney and initiate a divorce petition and was and was able within six months get a no contest divorce in November 2019, just a month after two years of being married on paper only. Okay. Yes, I had a prenup. But here's where I went wrong. Now, see, she she's sharing her story for y'all to get some lessons from it. And I'm okay with this now. I'm okay with this. So, you know, if y'all have your little telltale story you want to send in, you know, this and support at tonygaston.com is not the email for this, but I'm about two years behind on these emails. So when I say it's about two years, I, I got enough emails I got 1,880 emails. It's 365 days a year. So it's really like, it's really no point in sending in an email right now because I got so many I got to get through. And I'm going through each one of them instead of just skipping up to this month. The reason being because you never know. I never know what's in here. And the best email might be the next one or this one. And I just don't want to be picking and choosing because I don't know how God going to deliver the message to me for us so I just go one by one, okay? So understand that. But the email address on here is inbox at TonyGaskins.com. That's an email address, not a website. I have to clarify that because my my email is not at gmail.com. It's at my domain, at my website. So it's inbox, I-N-B-O-X, at TonyGaskins.com. And so sometimes I throw people off and they go to a website, you know, but that's the email address. But says that he is not after my money. When I get back home to my state, I see my attorney and initiate a divorce petition and was able within six months to get a no contest divorce in November 2019, just a month after two years of being married. So 25 months on paper only. Yes, I had a prenup, but here's where I went wrong. When I broke up and left and moved to another state, I should have blocked all his numbers and stayed gone. Number two, I should have filed for divorce at the nine month mark when I, fo when I found those pictures and he had no plan. Number three, I should never have married him. He had no to low ambition worked in his family's business, but wasn't even trying to come up with ideas to grow it. He's, he'd sleep in on Saturdays, watching cartoons and lay in the bed in the middle of the day. What was I thinking? I did not see this clearly when we were together. Yeah, it sounded like he got, just got, got to 15 and stopped aging, I mean, stopped growing. I'm not 15, watch the cartoon, 10, 12, 12, because he got no women in his phone, so 12. He got to 12 years old and stopped growing. Number four, I made excess, oh, times the money he did, but I'm in the low six figures. Okay, she didn't put the number in front of the excess, but she made times the money he did. I'm in the low six figures. That's an unsustainable dynamic with a real man. I guess because we knew each other in college and had gone out twice, I was dating based on this idea of him and his representative, and then after five years, I don't know. Maybe I felt desperate, over 40, single mom, overweight, or not motivated. We broke up at, le at least three or four times in the last four years of the 10-year ordeal. And as I said, ladies, don't be me. I've been working on my brain, my body, my brand. I want to increase my streams of income. 
my salary is 300k $300,000 but I want not have to work so hard I want to not have to work so hard and be worried about stuff that comes with it but I wish I'd have had my mother or someone put me on game in my 20s or early 30s but I now but I know now ex-husband says he has changed and now a year later wants to reconcile I talked to him six times in July when my father died and then he decided that I don't want that energy back and then decided not he decided forgive me she talked to him six times in July when her father died sorry about your loss and then decided that I don't want that energy back blocked put that in all caps with the T at the end and exclamation how I spell it God bless you she she she, she listening now to these because she answering it she read herself from left to right he has asked for the rings back should I mail them to him? Absolutely. I haven't worn them since February 2019, and I guess I could. They appraised at 5K. I don't need the money per, per se. What do you think? I have not spoken to him in three months and don't plan on it. Put a name right there. I almost said it now. Lessons learned and apply. Yeah, send him his rain back. Ain't no sense of keeping him rain because you meet the next man here. I want to see your wedding rain from you you know your ex and when you send him that ring back it let him know like listen playboy i'm not holding on to nothing from you like i don't want nothing from you like go on about your business here go your little five thousand dollar ring which really mean it might be worth ten thousand people when you go get it appraised they gonna give you a low bloke just because they want you to sell it for that five so that they can make them some money it might be worth 15k sometimes you know that man, that jury industry have a 300 percent markup now now it probably ain't work all that now if he don't if he don't unless he financed it or something but yeah the fact that he got a 5k appraised ring is a good thing because a lot of men won't do that and now three hundred thousand dollars so stuff you making some money now making you some money you hear me now it sound like you said you probably was going through some stuff and maybe i felt desperate over 40 single mom overweight or not motivated we broke up so that's right there what you got to keep addressing like you say you working on your three b's you working on your brain your body and your brand she actually well i was about to say said it in order but it's a lot of order i always put body last just because so many people get body shame and all that I, I brain brand body even though the body is just as important it just i, I don't like to focus on that because you know that's a sensitive area sensitive topic but that's good right there now that 300k all right now nah, making some good money and sound like you know you know what you need to know and the fact that you took the time to write this in to kind of just be a warning sign because somebody else might be getting ready to do something this stupid and and we just gonna use that s word we just gonna call it what it is you know just so that it could ugh, you got a little we don't want to say somebody getting ready to make the same decision that's too nice we need to be able to say somebody getting ready to do something this stupid so that they could hear this and be like oh hold on now hold on. i'm sounding like she was sounding now hold on now i'm gonna be looking at these bbc's in this man phone 1100 pictures that's a sickness that is a sickness when i was out there in that world yeah i could see like you know five ten pictures the fact that he got 1100 i give a man a hundred pictures just being nice just i'll give a man a hundred pictures being nice but even that is crazy a left in hundred pictures this man need to be in somebody's house somebody's center when i say house i'm talking about like a rehab house he need to be in some kind of recovery center that right there is insane what are you doing with all them pictures this man here is nasty you talk, you hear me? Er, er, with a capital P. Er, er. Wow. And yes, yeah, sister, you were desperate. And you know, you read yourself right now. You were desperate to deal with that right now. All them pictures. I've been out of there immediately if I was you. Because that right there, that's nasty there. And he just 
tan that thing up with that handler. Got that little little bit of lotion. He ain't use no lotion. That man, <laughs> handler going crazy. Yes, sir, Reebok. So there, there you have a lesson right there. And this is the thing, um, you know, single mom. She said she was single mom. So she said at the time she was overweight. At the time, not really motivated. At the time, over 40, desperate, but making $300,000 a year. So now, you ain't lazy now. You ain't lazy. You say you tired of working. And I've heard women in that price, in that income range, say that same thing. Yes, I make a quarter million a year, but I'm tired. I'm ready to sit down. I want a man who could take care of some of these here bills. I'm ready to sit down. I have heard that. I have heard that. Now, hold on now. The little thing about my wife is straight, but that box got a little bend in it. Boy, if that thing ain't bent, we finna have some problems. Y'all forget me. I just looked out my office and seen one of my wife Mother's Day gifts and that box supposed to be straight, but that box do a little curve at the bottom. Y'all forget me. So now listen. This to every woman, every man, as I'm looking at this right here, 300000 but with a $2 man, in his character, in his integrity, and probably in his pocket with a two hundred, I mean, with a two dollar man. Come on now, you cannot. Everybody, what she trying to tell y'all, cause she coaching today, is don't get desperate. Work on yourself, love yourself, know who you are, know what you want, know what you deserve, and do not get desperate. Look at this situation. And if y'all don't line up, if y'all are not evenly, equally yoked, go on about your business. Go on about your business. Now, sister, listen, listen. You say he talking about he a change, man. Listen, for 300000 <laughs> listen, be doing all kind of changing. Chain clothes, uh, for real, everything. For 300000 oh, he finna fake that change. He finna fake that change. To have somebody with $300,000? Come on now, listen. And this is the thing too now. Man know about that money. He know what that job title is. He know what that job pay. He know what he know what money look like. So he will do something strange for a piece of change. You hear me? You tell him, hey, you know what? I'll take you back, but I'm just tired of a regular man. I want a man that's gonna twerk. So if you willing to twerk for me just when I'm I get home and I'm tired and I'm you know and I need me a little entertainment, I don't watch TV, I want my husband to twerk. Guess he'll be right at the uh 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 look back at it. You hit me, look back at it. Three hundred thousand Listen, there is not much. If a woman make a hundred thousand, there is not much a man will not do. Now and if you will be a dummy and if you'll play the fool, he'll keep doing what he's doing. But for that Monty, a man gonna try to at least fake change to the best of his ability to get close uh, to that filet mignon. And the lady didn't think I know what filet mignon is. That filet mignon, he will do now by anything to get close back to them prawns. Do you hear me? Them good vacations and like, listen, y'all went on a vacation. He got what he wanted. Oh yeah, let's go down to Florida. Get my out of this OH10, Ohio. And now that's a bad look for Ohio now. Cause y'all know down here, you know, in down here now, Ohio, y'all got y'all little reputation up there. Y'all got y'all little reputation up there. And this man here just, whoo, he, I know it happened in every state, but you know, he, he, he making Ohio look bad. Making the men up there look bad. 1,100 naked pictures in the phone? I This is my first time ever hearing that. This is my first time ever hearing something that bad. You know, and when it comes to pictures in the phone, I've never heard of an obsession like that. That's just, wow. That I'm blown away by that. He nasty. Listen, if I was you, sister, he wouldn't be able to reach me 
with a thousand foot pole. He wouldn't be able to reach me on nobody's phone, nobody's social media, get a message through me to through somebody to me. He wouldn't be able to reach me no kind of way, nasty as he is. But listen, he got that vacation out you. And it's been a 10 year ordeal. Y'all broke up four times, at least three or four times in the last four years. Now, my question is how many other you know, benefits he got from you? Like how many clothes you bought him? How many shoes you bought him? How much money you loaned him for whatever? Or gave him how much you spent on them on birthdays and holidays how many trips y'all done took in these 10 years hopefully it ain't too much but sit down and count that up get some baby powder just get that feel just so you can ooh, don't never do that again because listen when if you are a woman who earns good money now me to me good money could be fifty thousand dollars Depending on where you living at, it might be thirty, thirty-five thousand. Now, if you living in the middle of nowhere, Alabama, you know, or Mississippi, where stuff might not be as costly, real estate or what have you, in certain areas, thirty-five thousand is good money to a two-dollar man now, to a man that don't have any ambition. But now, definitely, when you get to seventy-five thousand, entrepreneurially or corporately, when you get to seventy-five thousand you a millionaire and 75,000 you a millionaire like that's the millionaire next door make 75,000 a year when I say millionaire next door I don't mean literally I don't mean not I don't mean like in my neighborhood but like like how the book got that title I've never read the book but it's called a millionaire next door but that's what these people make 30 40 50 thousand dollars because you know how you become a millionaire compound interest so they just put dumping into that 401k. They dumping into that 401k and the company matching it. You're a millionaire. You you could be a millionaire making 25,000 a year if you putting 25, 35 dollars a week into your retirement account and by the time you 65, 40 years later, you're a millionaire. You going to have your million, a cool million. I got a client who she only put $75,000 in her IRA, but she put the money in the IRA into Roth IRA into aggressive funds, into aggressive investments, and that's seventy five thousand ninety six oh six sixteen twenty. So thirty four years. 34 years, that 75,000 turned into 2 million, practically $2 million. She a million now. She a million now. Guess what? That's one of my clients. She's single. And fortunately, she meet men who are millionaires too. But she's single, ready to mingle. But guess what? When I tell you, because the reason why I know this is because I used to be that man. I was looking to be a stay at home dad. I was looking for somebody just. I was so young, I was, you know, 19, 20 years old, met my wife at 21. Nobody had no money, of course, but I was, that's why I really, honestly, that was part of the reason. Although my wife was amazing, when she said her major is biomedical science, I said, ching, ching, that's what I, ching, ching, oh, oh, so, oh, okay, so what do you want to be? Oh, a doctor, okay, all right, okay. All right, I found her. And then, boy, look, the Lord said, gotcha. Got a woman who, who finna whip your butt into shape. And guess what? She ain't even finna be no doctor. And you finna be working. That's how it, that's how it happened. That's how it happened. And I say, but so I know this right here. I know 300,000. Listen, I'd have been sliding down poles. I'd have been what 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 outfit you want me to put on? I'd have had on outfits. Who you want me to be? The the male nurse today? What you want me to be? The the male man today? What you? Listen, three hundred thousand dollars. If it, if back then I a hundred thousand would have had me. And so listen to me, y'all ladies with Monty. And when I say Monty, this ain't got to be in salary. This could be 800 credit score. That's Monty. 800 credit score. Because when you go, because see, 
the credit cards, when you apply to them, they can't check your income when you apply for the card. You just put your income and they put in fine print. We may request to check this here. But you put you make a hundred thousand dollars or you put you make seventy five thousand dollars and you got an eight hundred credit score, that car finna give you twenty thousand to fifty thousand dollars. When a man has his little inventory, his little meeting with you about what you making uh, or what your credit score is, and that's a bad idea. Women always want to be asking, well, look, I need to know what a credit score is. All right, why are you throwing your little 740 around? You finna get used. A man will get with you because he know that's finna be a 2% APR on a house that he got him a roommate and in you as his wife your credit, your income then got y'all into the house, he freeload, and then he still get to keep all his women on the side because men know how to cheat without getting caught. So while you going around dangling income and dangling credit score, you will get used for it. And unless you know the game, unless you know the game, you will not see it coming. You will not see it coming. And this is what a lot of times women come to me and they say, well, Tony, well, you know, he got money. He got money. I say, yes, but it's hard to make money and he tired of making money. And he also know when his money finna run dry. Like, as, as a man, you know when you finna have a drought. So, even though men have money, men still be wanting them a woman who have money. Because my wife, she worked with me and... You know, she number one, numero uno for my sons, like best mom in the world. But every now and then, I be looking on, oh, uh, 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 so you don't want to go back? So you don't want to do the MCAT? Why you don't want to do the MCAT? I'm going to get in mad school. Because, you know, we could work in it. We could work from anywhere. I could shoot a YouTube video. I could coach a client. I could fly from anywhere. Like, you sure you don't want to do mad school? Man, baby, come on now. now. Listen, baby, I don't want you to give up your dreams. Come on now, cause anyway, if we, if you got to go to the med school, it down there in Dominican Republic, I'm there. I am there. And so every now and then, I be kind of oh, baby. You know what I'm now, I don't know what I be asking for. You know, I be saying that when I kind of be just talking, just kind of joking. But on the, on the flip side too, I'd be like, uh, you financing like a little tight, month, uh, you so young. Well, baby, you don't want to open your no salon. Or you don't want to open your know. She focused on being a mom, and so that's a blessing in itself. And that's what I be seeing with a lot of women that I coach who make good money. They like, listen, I want to be a wife, and I want to be a mom. It's some women who like, no, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna have my own. I gotta have my own. I gotta make my own money. I gotta live my dreams. I gotta have all this. But some women dream, a part of their dream is to be a wife and to be a mom. And they want a man who can earn enough that if she wants to sit down, she could sit down. And so and when I look at my wife's life and I just look at her energy level of being tired and stuff. I, I can't see well 40 hour a job 40 hour a week job could fit in and so honestly it gives me so much more of a respect for working moms moms who and, and, and I see the difference too though because I see a lot of moms who work kids clothes be wrinkled and they they fingernails be dirty and their feet be stank and their clothes be dirty and, and they hair be gunky and cause mama is working. And so I can't judge her because I see what it is like living with my wife and her not having to work for nobody. And it's still hard. And so that's one thing I have realized and I wish I could really, you know, put that on a megaphone to men just to understand like, yeah, nine out of 10 men, you hugging your child you kissing your child, you playing with your child a little bit, but you not carrying the same load that mama carrying. You ain't got the same gifts that mama got. That take a whole nother level of energy. And I understand that. And so that's why I'm kind of like, 
I just can't understand. I just can't wrap my head around it. I'm like, it's just, it's a lot going on. And, and it's just not my skill set. It ain't my gifting. And if I try to get in there, my wife, she don't want me doing the laundry. She don't want me doing the dishes. She don't want me doing that stuff because she's like, I'm just going to have to do it over behind you. I'm like, no, no, I can do it the right way. Nope, nope. She want it done her way. So I got to stay out of the way, but I see that workload. And I'm like, wow. And then I serve. I'm serving. I'm living my purpose. It could be draining at time, but it's fulfilling. It's fulfilling. And so her fulfillment is our son succeeding, getting straight A's, doing good in a sports. Like that gives her joy because she is a major part in that. And so I see that right there. And that's the thing that it comes with like, it's this, it's this battle that a lot of women that I'm noticing, a lot of women going through this battle that we're like, look, I can earn this money. I could, I could go out here and eat. I could earn, I could grind, but I'm ready to do something else. So I'm ready to sit down. I'm ready to get married. And sometimes that could turn into desperation and a man could want you for your money. And then when you sit down, when you get pregnant, now he now he stopped liking you because he never really liked you he wanted that money and this is the thing what a lot of women don't understand and 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 women are the same way guilty of the same thing as far as when it comes to money because it's no women out here just electing a broke man just looking for no broke man and so but this is the thing what a lot of women don't understand is just because a man got a good job and he make good money don't mean he don't want you for your money because now when you come in with your money that splits his bills in half so now the other half that he was responsible for paying now he get to stipe them few thousand dollars into his classic car into his wardrobe into his habits into his growth account his investments his little fun, because now you saving him that money. He don't go and put that money in just the savings nine out of 10 times. He going and doing something with that money. But now if you have not evaluated his character, now you got a man who's saving money by not having to pay all his own bills because you got income coming in. But now he using that other money because he got low character to cheat on you. And the wine and dine, his 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 side woman. And then when you get pregnant and you ready to sit down, how many times I read a letter or you hear somebody, he left me when I was pregnant. Because he had low character when you met him, but you did not recognize it. So when you got pregnant, and I understand the word is pregnant, I say pregnant. So that's all right when you get pregnant now he takes and he's, he doesn't see a use for you because now because he got low character and he didn't really like you he said oh uh, uh, look like got an alien in your stomach <laughs> and you around here waddling like daffy duck and he, all these back pain all this moaning comp complaining all this throwing up Woo! It disgusts him because he's not in love with you and he got low character. So that's why he go get him another woman who, who her body is still normal. She not, she's not pregnant. So her, her stomach is just a stomach without some growing in it. And that's why a lot of shallow men, grown boys, and, and, and the thing about it is this could be a man who make millions of dollars. This could be a man who make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Money don't make him a good man just because he could provide. So it's like, yeah, okay, now you pregnant. And yeah, he could provide, but because he got low character and you didn't pay attention to the red flags, now he cheating on you while you're pregnant, even though you comfortable financially. That's why I tell you, you got to look at the whole picture. And this man right here really ain't got no money but then also don't have good character. So yeah, sister, you just knock yourself across the head with a billy club to deal with him. 
So yeah, you were down bad. Yeah, you were all the way desperate. Capital D. Yeah, you were all the way desperate. And so, yeah, feel that. Get that in your spirit. Just really understand that right there now. And and for everybody who's watching this, I want you to evaluate yourself. Evaluate yourself and pay attention and kind of see. Kind of see like, okay, let me see now. Am I desperate? Am I? Because now, I, I'm like, baby, did you really want to be a doctor? Or was that just what you was doing for your parents? And then come to find out, it was really just societal pressure. Have her having Jamaican parents who left Jamaica as young adults to come to America to give their kids a better life. She's her mother's only child. Her dad has two other daughters. And it's pressure when your parents uh, are immigrants and they have come from another country and they working to give you a better life, it's a lot of pressure. And a lot of times them situations like, listen, doctor, lawyer, pharmacist, actor, actor, what is that? Actor, YouTuber, huh? What? Anything else? Like, who are you? Who house you live in? What, what the world, what's going on with you? What are we, we doctor, lawyer, pharmacist? I don't know, model, a model. <laughs> so you think you're cute? <laughs> All right, you better be cute in it, in that white jacket. You, it's a lot of pressure. So when we got to the place to where my wife could do anything she want to do, and we could pay for her med school, she looking at med school with a side eye because now she looking at it like. I don't want to be a doctor like that that don't do nothing for me no more like i'm right here i'm happy as a wife and a mother and helping run our companies that we have built together setting my own schedule my wife work on friday so a lot of times y'all email in and you don't get no email it's because it's an email that only she could answer and she run that part of it. So when you don't get no email in a timely fashion, that's because my wife running that. And she work on Friday. You know why? Because Friday is payday. And so, but me, being her husband, I'm like, ain't nothing I can say. I can't fire her. So I'm like, yeah, you fire her. All you do is work on Friday. I can't do that. Happy wife, happy life. So listen, you got to wait on that email. So every now and then I be getting in there trying to answer the email. I'm like, man, come on now, baby. Come on now, answer the email. But, you know, she happy. And so I understand for a lot of women, being a wife and a mom would complete them. Like they'll feel good. And because it's love, it's pure love, it's real love. And my wife wasn't raised with her father, so she lacked that. And I'm talking about my situation. See, this is the thing. I don't just be preaching at y'all. I use my situation and what I notice in my situation. And my wife, she noticed me. A lot of times, oh, Tony, you're going to get in trouble. No, she know that I'm a vessel. She know I have to be transparent about our story in order to help people. And so this is the thing. Some people, some women and men but i'm talking to a woman who wrote in feel like the career is everything like you got to have your own you got to make your own money you can't depend on a man and the reason why they feel like that is because they've never seen a healthy example of a dependable man loving and cherishing a woman who does not work an outside job in the household is a whole job Running a household is harder than any job, but we don't see it like that. We see it as, oh, that's your duty. That's easy. You're supposed to be able to do that. No, no human is supposed to be and want to be running out the kids and, and doing all the stuff that it take and all the stuff you didn't know it was going to come with and everything that you signed up for that you didn't know was in the contract. It's a whole lot of stuff that come up that, you know, my son's in the room wrestling and playing, 
My big son fall off the thing, his foot fly in the air. It hit my baby boy in in the he loses two front teeth a year before he was supposed to lose them. That ain't you ain't sign up for that. Your baby come running out gushing blood out the mouth and now this beautiful smile is snag a tooth. You ain't sign up for that. My wife she about lost it. You see what I'm saying? Hurt her so bad. And so it's a lot that come with being in your home and being a CEO of home. And so it's some women that when you look at a career, you're like, listen, I got to do it. I got to make this money because I got to feed myself. But I, I wouldn't mind being at home, being full time with my husband in our situation with the kids. If we have kids or the dogs or the cats or the adopt, adopted kids, whatever it is, I wouldn't mind that. And being able to spend, live life, go vacation. If you want something new, you could go buy it. If you want to take a trip, you could take a trip. Like, I wouldn't mind that versus going and punching a clock 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And so, in, in, in a rat race, in corporate America. And then some women look at like, no, got to have a career. Got to have this here going. Got to own my own business or whatever it may be, whether it's corporate or entrepreneurial. But got to have this. But then when you get to the root of it, it's like, oh, I saw my mom struggle or, oh, I saw my mom not have, I, oh, I saw my mom not work and my dad cheat on her or my stepdad cheat on her. And so it's like, and then she didn't have her own, so she couldn't leave. So I made a promise that I would never depend on a man. Like whenever you get to the root of it, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of, um stay at home wife bashing online it's a lot of it's a, i seen a celebrity quote talking about her mama told her a woman should always have her own always make her own money always and never depend on a man you know why when i looked at that young lady and i looked at the culture she come from her daddy was going outside her mama head her daddy would treat her mama like a slave, like a robot. So her mama went to her with this message. Listen, never depend on a man. Always have your bag secure. Why? Because her mama getting dogged out. If mama was treated like a queen, then mama wouldn't feel bad and go to her daughter and put that in her daughter's head that there's no good men that's going to be dependable and that's going to be a provider that you can count on and trust in when you stand at home with your kids and you, you know, there for your kids. Because when your child go to school and have a recital at school at 10 a.m., if you on a certain type of job and you ain't got that flexibility, your child in there by themselves and you can't be there. And that's how it is. That's life. But if you, as a loving parent, had the option to be at every 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., recital, speech, rehearsal, or whatever it is at school, if you had the option to be there and your life still be taken care of financially, nine out of ten times you're going to say, I want to be there for my child. I want to be there because this is a first or this is an amazing moment. I want my child to look out there into them seats and see my smiling face. But if I got to be at this here job, I can't make it. So where's the choice at? And so what happens is sometimes that desperation sets in. And when that desperation said, oh, I don't got no three o'clock. I got a four o'clock. Y'all got to forgive me because... This is only my second time wearing this hat. My homeboy bought this hat from the hat. Let's see, I got a I got a hook on my head, and this my size now. But this hat just woo, it's a little too tight, and they ain't got my hairline where it need to be. So I got to have this hat on today. So y'all got to forgive me. I, I know y'all understand now. Everybody don't have no good hair day. Ooh, Lord, I'm squeezing my thoughts. I'm trying to think. I'm like, what am I doing? Losing my train of thought. So y'all forgive me. And so this is the thing. And so you have to this you have to get to a place to where you're comfortable 
where you are that you have that you choose happiness that you and then the semantics arguers oh you should choose joy because happiness depends on your happenings oh that's a cute quote no you choose happiness too look up the definition they were the same thing they synonyms all right yeah thank you you could choose happiness you could choose joy you could choose peace in whatever situation you in it's a choice. It's a choice. That's why you see people smiling in a third world country and only get to eat twice a week, three times a week. But they still go out out there in the dirt with no shoes on, no shirt on, look flat covering their private and dance. Do their little dance. Do their little smiling. Do their little clapping. And then the missionaries have to come over and feed them. Or, or they go out and hunt. If, if it's land, if the land is desolate, then they can't even hunt. Now, that's what I just thought about. I'm like, well, why they be starving if they could eat off the land? But the land must be desolate with no rain in certain areas. No rain, so they can't grow crops, can't grow nothing. No, no way to make weapons. No energy to go chase down something to kill to eat. I don't know what it looked like over there, but we, but you see, they be serving us them commercials now. They're going to serve them commercials and then you make your donation and the dog on foundation take 90% of the money and then go over there and feed the people a little slop. It's like, y'all can't, can he, can y'all going to go way over there? Can they have some spring beans, some collard greens? Like what you feeding a slop? A bowl of slop you feeding. I, I know their stomach might be sensitive, but mashed potato? Come on now. Some rice? And be on there showing the little showing the little boy with the fly in his mouth and, and his little pot belly. Oh, we just wanna help. Send us some money. Yeah, right. I see what you feeding that boy. I'm finna go over there myself and feed and pay and bill and invest. Y'all over there stealing, stealing money and stealing resources over there. And so now listen, you take and you see a smile, you see a dance. When I when I went over to South Africa, it wasn't what they show us on TV, but when they took me through the little township and people had them bricks stacked up with the tin slab throw across the top, and it just my height or a little bit taller, and they living in them. But then right across the street, like you go a little bit ways up, it's big houses. I never seen nothing like that in my life. But them people walking, they talking, they 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 that's they like, they living, they have a good time. So it's like, listen, if you if you working and you struggling, choose happiness. If you working and you rich, but you tired, choose happiness. And you have to always ask yourself, where am I operating from? So before you get ready to make a decision about who you finna date, who you finna be with, I got a coach here in a little bit, and the client um, probably don't watch my videos because they're too long. And the client, and this not a regular, the, is the person didn't book me from YouTube. I, I know the person from working with her the former organization so I'm a life coach for organizations for companies for teams and that's where we cross paths but what the client is saying I will pay anything I will pay anything for coaching but because of the way that I met the person I'm not charging because the head person who brought me in brought me in in a capacity where I was taken care of and these people were young people. They grown, they adults, but they was young people. So that group, that sector that I work with, I don't charge them after they get from that organization, go to the next level. And I, and I told a client, I said, I can't charge you because for one of how I met you and then two, because you're in a vulnerable state. And it would not be right for me to throw a price out there when you're vulnerable. So the price will be zero. And I'm going to sell this here session. 
And what the client was saying was, I would do anything to save my relationship. But I could tell this relationship that need to be let go. And so that's what you have to ask yourself is where am I operating from? And that's what she wrote in to say, listen, don't ever operate from a place of fatigue, from a place of frustration, from a place of desperation, from a place of insecurity, from a place of weakness. So now with this 300,000, sister could uh, get on my mentor.life and she can afford a session every single week, especially if it's a $25 hour coach, but she could afford a session of whatever price is every single week if she want to. And so that's what says you got to be willing to do that work when you right here, when you can diagnose yourself and you're not in a deep down, depressed, vulnerable state, you take your ability, your earning, and you invest a portion of that. If you make 300,000, if you come home, whatever you come home with, you need to be investing 10% of that into you. Whether that's coaching, consulting, starting a business, writing a book, you need to invest 10%, at least invest 10% into you. You save 10%, or you could invest 10%. When I say save, you could you could put it on the market. It's still a saving, but it could grow faster than a savings account. And then you can sow 10%. Meaning you can help people in need, or you could sow into ministry, you know, to a ministry that you feel is doing a good work, uh, your church or whatever ministry you feel like, you sow. So now you making this right here and you it's growing you it's growing you your heart being developed made pure made whole and everything going everything going hey this is tony gaston god bless you now i could talk on this a little longer but i think you get the gist but this head squeeze me this hat squeeze me i gotta go get my new hat Woo! i'm gonna lose a brain cell so hey god bless you tonight i'm on a call tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you got this far and you haven't signed up for the moving on course, which you might need to move on, especially this sister right here, she's already moving on. But I'm doing live calls. Instead of just the videos inside the course, I'm doing live calls. So the first call is tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you get to see this before 9 p.m., you could go to TonyGaskinsAcademy.com and you'll see the course says moving on. It's talking about getting over that last relationship or getting out of this bad relationship and we're just gonna be diving deep just talking and talking together me and you on the phone as a group and just sharing some of the mindsets of what keep us stuck what keep us in a bad relationship what keep us going back and really dig, digging deep and doing the work and then, so it, it'll be at least i'm thinking four calls but it could be more and it's it's I'm not charging what it costs. It's only $47. This could be $497, being that it's live interaction with live coaching and live examples. But that's just, you know, how I move right now. So understand that. Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.